Hi. Let's use APL to reship a string, but doing so in the wrong way. The task is really simple. We're going to create a um, static function. It's going to take a string, that's a character vector, as right argument, and a number of columns as left argument. So then we are supposed to return a matrix, a proper matrix, that has uh, this number of columns. And we simply have to reshape the string to that number of columns. Now, this is trivial. And every APL with a little bit of experience has already done this. But there's a catch. You know these? These are the APL primitives. My precious APL primitives. You can't use any of those. That's right. Every single APL primitive, be it a primitive function or a primitive operator, is prohibited. How are we going to do this? Well, we still have system functions. We still have the function definition syntax. We can use bracket indexing because that's not a proper function. And we can use parentheses, of course. To make this at all possible, we have to assume that the strings are just normal strings and with normal characters in them, and that we don't have to worry about rounding. Right. So, there are a couple of ways to do this. And the first one uh, that I'll show actually outsources the problem to a system function. Uh, you might not think that there are any system functions that would do array manipulation, and that's right, there isn't. But there is a system function called uh, quotmap, and it does memory mapping between a file on disk and, and a kind of virtual array on the APL side. So when you address the array, you're actually addressing contents of the file. Because arrays are multidimensional in the APL, then quadmap needs to know the shape of the array so that it can translate between potentially multiple indices and offsets into the file. When you specify for quadmap what the shape of the array is, you can leave out, or put a placeholder value actually, um, in the shape, and it will auto compute the length of that dimension so that it fits as best possible to the file. And that really solves our problem. Only, of course, we need to create such a file first. So, let's say we have this text and uh, we put this into um, a file. And we don't need to worry about really what the file name is called as long as we know what it is. Um, so, let's just use the uppercase alphabet to as, as file name and in case it exists already let's uh, put a one here to say that we want to overwrite it okay now if we use quad map we can say 80 that's the data type it uh, just means a unicode character um, and then after that comes the shape so remember we have to write a function that takes the um, the number of columns here so we want alpha over here um, and then we want a negative one, which is a special value indicating that to auto-compute this dimension. So this is type 80, that's character. Um, we don't know how many rows they're going to be, but they're going to be alpha columns. And then we're using a quad map, Ooh, map on this file that has the name, uh, the alphabet, doesn't really matter um, over here. Let's put a, a placeholder argument just so we can run this and see that it, it works. So, see, that worked. But um, let's say that um, instead we put something short in here. And we want to change it into two columns. You see that extra space at the bottom? This is because when we use quad input, we write the file with line endings appropriate to the platform we're currently on. I happen to be on Windows, 
and so it writes a, a character turn and line feed to the end of the file. And we can see that if we change the data type to integer instead, then we can see that we got a 1310, that's character turn line feed um, at the end. Now, there's not really a way that we can remove this with primitives, but quad map, um, if it sees that the array doesn't fit to the shape that we have we have said, then it will round down uh, the number of, um, of elements used. So if we only had one extra um, byte at the end, then this wouldn't be an issue. How can we do that? Well, when we wrote the file, then we actually had a chance to specify which both encoding, that's not interesting, but also which line ending we want to write. So I can overwrite the operating system default um, and specify that I want just a line feed. And now uh, this will still work. If we try to do the same thing here with the two column one and then read that, then we can see that it's rounded off that 10 at the, at the end. Okay, so now we just need to put this together and there's a problem here. If we try to, um, to take this statement here and put it in here with a diamond, then the defend will quit as soon as this has been done because we're only running this for the side effect of it. So you could avoid that in normal circumstances by doing an assignment and this will work. But remember, I prohibited assignment as well. So we need a way to combine two statements without using an assignment. And we can't really use the diamond either, even though it's allowed, because we don't have a way to continue. Now, there's a trick that APLS use sometimes, which is to use the left function. So this is a function that takes the result of, of all of this over here and ignores it and returns what's over here and we can continue. But we're not allowed left tech because that's not a function either. So here's a trick we can use. Let's indeed put two statements here. Let's make sure to uh, use our proper write argument over here. And why not remove some spaces that we don't have to have um, as well. We can use guards. We can use error guards. Error guards are kick into effect. They sit there and watch if something goes wrong, if there's an error happening, and then they get run um, when the error happens. And the way we write that here, we can say if for any error, that's what zero means, we do this. Oh, look, more spaces we can remove just for fun. Um, now we need to cause an error. So one way to cause an error would be, say, by dividing by zero or in other ways, using primitives in ways they're not allowed to um, to be used. But we're not allowed to use any primitives. We could use some system function, give it a um, an argument that it can't handle. But there's an easier way. Let's put in a symbol that APL doesn't use. That would be a real syntax error. And that really solves the problem the wrong way. Of course, this isn't really very nice because it has a side effect of writing a file to disk and potentially overwriting an existing file uh, that's there. And let's see if we can find a different way to do this. So the approach we're going to use is we're going to, to use regular expressions. And they're very nice for text processing but normally when you just need to reshape, that's definitely not what you would use in APL. This is going to be complicated because we need to, we need some these regular expressions to be dynamic. We have a length that might change and we cannot just format this and concatenate a regular expression together because we are not allowed to use all those primitives. But let's for a moment say that we were, and then we'll little by little remove the primitives that are involved. So the idea is that for regular expressions, you can use the dot that means any character. So this will match any of these characters. And then we are going to match um, a count of those five in this case. We'll get back to how that five gets in there. And then we'll replace that 
with a pattern which says um, the match that we found, so that would be those five characters, followed by um, a carriage return. And then we apply that to the argument. Yes, that's the right tech. We'll get rid of that in a moment. Okay, so now we can see we get an extra line break uh, at the end here. So that's a bit of an issue that we'll have to solve. Uh, but other than that, it looks right. However, uh, it isn't actually a matrix. It's just one long vector. We can fix that, the fact that it's a vector, by using quite a FMT. A system function that takes any array and returns a matrix that looks like that array so this looks the same but if we look for this at the shape of it it's indeed a matrix but one with too many rows in it that's because we have a trailing line break we need to get rid of so how can we get rid of the trailing line break and uh, we can use a regular expression negative look ahead that means whenever we try to to match something then we look ahead to see if um, what comes next fulfills our criteria and or in this case it isn't this thing so I want to say that look ahead and make sure that there isn't uh, the end of the text there so this will match these five characters and it will match these five characters and then it will not match these five characters because if you look ahead we find the end of the input so that's what the dollar sign means the end of the input and we can see we got this matrix and now it has the right shape. Now we just need to get rid of all the primitives. So this here, the way we'd we would normally get put this five in is we would split in this into two character vectors and then we would format the left argument and put it in here and we'd generate our regular expression over here and uh, that would work. But we're not allowed, not concatenation, and not uh, format. So we can't do it like that. We do have quad format, but we can't just use quad format as it is here because quad format will always give us a character matrix. So this will give us a one row matrix when we actually wanted just a vector. However, remember, we're allowed to use indexing. So this is a two dimensional array, and we want only row number one all columns that got rid of the format but how do we do the concatenation we're not allowed to use any concatenation well what we can do is we can take this value here and inject it into this uh, regular expression by using this kind of like a template so let's put in a character that we don't need in here, say underscore. And then we take this value over here and we can again use regular expressions. Um, so we, we say we replace any underscore, which we know there's only going to be one because this is the whole text. Replace the underscore with this text over here. And we'll have to parenthesize this uh, because the operator otherwise would catch this. Okay, so this creates the pattern uh, that we want. Oops, right, invalid regular expression format. Um, this is, oh, this is because this is an array and this whole thing is an array, so they strand together. This is getting complicated. Uh, we need an extra set of uh, parentheses over here. Okay. And um, so far, so good. Finally, there's this right tag over here that we can get rid of simply by parenthesizing everything on the left, like that. And there's a solution to the problem using no primitives whatsoever. Okay, before I go, how would you actually do this in the APL? So the way we, you would do it is you take um, the length of the argument, um, the, uh, that the one we need to reshape. We can divide that by the left argument. That gives us the number of columns, a uh, number of rows. And then we need to put this together with 
uh, the number of um, of columns. This gives us the shape. And then we can use this to reshape uh, the right argument. So this is how you can do it. Although there are a lot of parentheses here, and I don't particularly like those. So the way I would do it is whenever we have a dyadic function, like this one, for example, that takes um, as argument on the right just a single value as an expression on the left, then I would commute or swap the arguments using the commute operator. Because then we can get rid of uh, parentheses on the right, since APL has long right scope. So we do this once. Over here, we have exactly the same thing. We have an expression on the left, a value on the right. So we can commute that as well. And here we have it again, comma. We can commute that and put the, uh, the 5, which is actually the left argument um, on the left. And you can write, write it like this. As a neat little defen with lots of commutes. Um, or you could actually do it as a tacit function as well. Um, so if we try to translate this as a tacit function, this says uh, this function, this is a, a, a divides, but it's not a normal divides between the arguments. We first need to pre process the right argument of divides with tally, with the count. So we can use the uh, beside operator for that. That takes care of this part. This part is now tacit. We should also get rid of um, the parentheses here. And then uh, we are concatenating the left argument and using that to reshape the right argument. And then we have a tacit solution to the same thing. Thank you for watching.